Thanks, everybody. You know, Dave, I, I don't know. I guess Rickles really, really summed it up uh, on the telethon. He introduced Jerry at the beginning of the telethon. At the very said, beginning of the show, Don Rickles yeah, came out? Sure. When he said about Jerry in heaven, he is going to be one of the key guys. And I think that we can apply that. I would say that about you, baby. It's in an heaven, old... Uh, you are going to be one of the key, definitely also. Thank you also, very much, Paul. That's, one uh, of the key guys. That's, a, that's an ancient biblical expression, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I think you find key guys in the Old Testament, I believe. <laughs> there were the wise men, and then there were the key guys, and, it's a, uh, and then the disciples, and on and on. But the, <laughs> but the key guys were, were uh, and they shopped at Manny's Music uh, right here. In, uh, a lot of time, folks, uh, one of the questions people ask me on a regular basis is, is your television program edited? And uh, when this question comes up, I can only scoff and say, <laughs> no, no, there is no need to, ed our, to edit our television program whatsoever. But uh, lately, under more tough questioning, we have been forced to change our story. So tonight, uh, we are going to uh, show you uh, the reason, and it's always with good reason, that this program is edited. Periodically, things do go wrong. Uh, every talk show host's nightmare, boy, it's mine, is offending a guest. And this does happen occasionally, and as a result, you have to take a few things out. Watch the monitors. And uh, the project you're currently involved in, uh, Edwin, is uh, another NBC white paper. What is the, the topic of the white paper this time? <laughs> uh, ooh, ooh, put this, but don't handle that any more than you need to. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. We, we, we have a new man making the coffee. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> I didn't write the introduction. These are written uh, days in advance. They're written for me. Uh, even in my own daily speech, I, I don't use the phrase low life. Please accept my apology. Now, um, sometimes what seems like a perfectly good idea turns out badly, like the time I brought my lovable dog, Bob, onto the show. It's, it's all right. No, don't, don't worry about it. No, well, he'll be okay. Easy, Bob. That's a good dog. I bet he smells your dog. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. Come on. Uh, now, when you're booking about a dozen guests a week to be on this uh, program, you're always going to have a couple of slip-ups. You don't play tennis no. prof professionally? No. Do you play it at all? No. Have you ever been to a tennis tournament? No. Who, who booked you for the show, do you? I don't really know. Hi. Uh, if you've just joined us, we're here with uh, someone who, until a few minutes ago, we were positive was Andrea Yeager. Uh, where are you from? Pennsylvania. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, do you think you could give us a hand here? Have a seat. Uh, ask him who told him he could be on the show. Um, talar ni svenska? Uh, de vill veta varför ni är här. Vem som har bjudit hit er. De vet inte varför ni har kommit hit. Um, förstår ni vad jag säger? Så får jag stå på mulasset så gör jag. It's not Swedish. No. Oh, it's not Swedish. Så får jag stå på mulasset så gör jag. Så får jag stå på mulasset så gör jag. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know. And of course, every now and then something completely unexplainable will happen, and uh, we've had to edit a few of those I out. I was uh, under the impression that liquid nitrogen is a very volatile uh, chemical. Well, it's cold. It's not exactly volatile. Yeah. Uh, but dangerous for kids to be handling it. Pardon me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Do you have to do that now? Uh, well, it's going to take about half an hour for the coals to get hot enough. Yeah, but we're right in the middle of the show, and I was wondering if you could do it somewhere else. Well, um, I tried earlier to do it out in the hall, but the uh, security guard, uh, you know, was giving me a hard time about it. Well, uh, I'm sorry. That's, that's not my problem. You can't do it here. Well, um, it's going to, you know, it's going to take a while, and if... You, you know, you're going to be the first one to complain if the coals aren't hot. <laughs> I have no idea how that happened. Uh, uh, many people ask me if audience rowdiness is ever a problem. Well, we have great audiences, you. but occasionally it'll happen. Yeah, <laughs> by the door, you. Yeah, right, you know damn well what I'm talking about, pal. And... 
finally, uh, finally, a guest will come on with a bad attitude, and I'll lose my patience. This will happen occasionally. Okay, these are all reasons that we have had to edit our show in the past. Jay Leno will be coming out here in a couple of minutes, so come on back after you watch this. She was nice, wasn't she, Paul? She was nice, huh? Was she ever some kind of chick, let me tell you. <laughs> she was uh, really, really a nice person. Uh, those of you familiar, familiar with the workings of this program know that most of the time we tape our show without pauses or interruption, but there are those rare occasions when we do have to go back and edit a show. Sure, it takes time, effort, and some expense, but it is necessary if we want to maintain the seamless professional quality that has come to be synonymous with late night. Let me show you some videotape that never made it on the air, and maybe then you'll understand better why we had to edit these things out of the show. Take a look now, won't you? For examples, sometimes we have... I'm sorry, what have I done wrong here? Oh, this will all be edited out, so there's no problem. Oh, I see. For example, sometimes we have to edit the show because of an innocent slip-up like this one. So, whose idea was it to build the garage at a luncheon meet? Oh, my sister's. Your sister's. Yeah. Now, was there, did you have to go downtown and get this thing zoned and approved by the, uh, the building code and that kind of thing? Oh, uh, it took hours. You did? Yes, Hal. The holster. Oh. We can cut that out, can't we? Sure. I had, to, uh, had, to, uh, had to edit that right out. Now, metal tip safety shoes and monthly hearing tests have kept our accident record low, but I'm sorry to say it isn't yet perfect. Now, Here's a scene I'm glad no one had to see. So these are the things that Bill Wendell brought in that we were talking about, and uh, we're not sure exactly what they are, but take a look at the uh, detail work on these. Uh, Bill, can you bring the camera in here a little more closely? It's really so... <laughs> Sorry, Dave, I didn't see him coming. He came from nowhere. Oh, my gosh, are you... Hi, doctor. Son, just stay where you are. Don't move your arm. Don't move it. <laughs> Is he going to be all right? He's a very lucky young fellow, Dave. He'll be fine. Oh. Now, darn it, you kids, I've asked you a hundred times, do your bicycling in the hallway. Please. Of course, we also have a duty as broadcasters to protect the public from reckless expressions of irresponsible ideas. What's up, what? Dave? Just about all your sponsors are guilty of what I'm talking about. <laughs> Sears and Roebuck? Why, they've been doing it for years. So is the Ford Motor Company. And Kraft Foods? God, those guys are real devils. And they're not half as bad as Procter & Even, uh, oh, sure. Even with an alert production staff monitoring every aspect of the program, there are always problems, and we still haven't exactly figured out what went wrong here. This man isn't drunk, Dave. He's dead. Dead? Yeah, judging by his condition, I'd say he's been dead for at least 48 hours or so. Maybe longer. No kidding. It was heart? No, it, it appears that he drowned. Here, take a look. Oh, yeah. See? I'll be darned. Salt water in his eye yeah. around there. Yeah? Well, thanks for coming by. Sorry, there's nothing I can do. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> and like any, t any TV show, we've got a lot of technical equipment here to deal with, and you can be sure that we have our share of little foul-ups along those lines. And this was your first film as a director, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I'd done some commercials before, but this is my first feature-length film. Yeah. Uh, I, I wonder if you could explain some of the important differences between directing a, a commercial and directing something like this. Dave. Dave. Uh, Hal, just a second. Hal, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, Dave, uh, Pete accidentally hit the atmospheric switch and filled the studio with helium again. Hal, this is the third time this has happened, and I'm getting plenty tired of it. If this is ever repeated, there's going to be big trouble. I'm awfully sorry. Uh, we'll get it straightened out in a second. So, just a few reasons why occasionally we have to edit the show. We'll be back. Bill Zach will be out here, so come on back, folks.
Welcome back to the show, folks. You know, we're getting uh, darn near the end of 1983, and we thought tonight would be a, a fine time to reminisce and reflect and show you some of what we consider to be the highlights uh, of the year past. And I think the first thing, uh, we're sort of talking about dogs tonight, and the first thing that stands out in my mind is the night that a lady and her dog appeared on a segment we call Stupid Petrix, and, well, things kind of got out of hand, and I, I think once you take a look at this videotape, you'll remember what I'm talking yeah, about. What is Shannon going to do for us tonight? Well, Shannon's going to roll over and say bye-bye. Shannon will roll over and say bye-bye. Now, do you need any help with this? Yeah, if you can just step away and wave bye-bye like to I'm Shannon. Like I'm leaving and saying goodbye. Right, okay. right. Okay, all right. Shannon! Shannon! <laughs> easy, easy. <laughs> to get a Russian psychic in here to take over. Uh, then uh, there was the time when things weren't going too well in my own personal life. My private life was kind of all fouled up, and uh, frankly, I had forgotten just how far I would let myself go until I looked at this videotape. It's certainly been a grueling tour. Do you have any idea what it's like uh, to be uh, uh, This is my first book. So you've only written one book? That's right. Well, I think we all know how painful that can be. <laughs> Tell you what, uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> Uncanny resemblance, wasn't it? Uh, you know, we've had all kinds of different regular features on the show, and, and I guess one of my favorites over the last year has to be male models say the darndest things. Take a look. <laughs> My name is Tim Bradhall. Tim, how long have you been a model? Oh, about uh, four years now. Now, Tim, you must have uh, heard what uh, people sometimes say or maybe know what people think about the male models, that uh, the work is really easy and uh, you guys are paid an enormous amount of money and, and all you're really doing is just kind of standing around. Now, is it a, a difficult job? No, not really. It's pretty easy. <laughs> Pretty easy. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, there you go. It certainly is true. Male models sure do say the darndest things. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here, Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, every night we get almost 300 people in our studio audience, and uh, they're always pretty nice. But for one reason or another, one or two audiences seem to be more memorable than all the others. Watch closely. Were there any uh, stars who didn't want to include their personal phobias and uh, neuroses in your book? Only a few. Most seem to be pretty interested in my project. I've listed their mortal fears, and where it applies, I've listed their delusions and fantasies. There are a couple of celebrities with multiple personalities, and if we could just take a minute to read from this list Excuse of... Excuse me, just, just a second. Excuse me. Pal, how could you have it? Have the pages pass out the cough drops, please. I'm off. I'm sorry. It's, uh, it's been like this all winter. Now. The uh, worst cold and flu season I've ever had. And uh, finally, one date I'll never forget in my whole life. Paul, I think you'll remember this. This was November 14th, 1982. That's when something went wrong in the control room, and the entire show was broadcast from a parallel universe. <laughs> Several hundred feet below the surface of the earth, the pressure was building and building and building till finally the life-supporting chamber could withstand it no longer. And there was a massive implosion which resulted in many, many injuries. <laughs> was a terrible monologue. I should be the host of this show. I don't, I don't
don't understand it either. I, I don't know what that was. Uh, we got to uh, pause here. Oh, no, we're not pausing. We're going to bring out my next guest right away. You know, it's so nice. It's, it's so heartwarming to come down here every day and to, to work with a crew. You know, we talk about a love crew. This is really the love crew, this is, what we've got. And this this is, is the love crew. This is the love show, I think, of any show. Is How are you, Paul? I'm just swell. I'm just having the time of my life. No, no. How, really, how really, are you? Really, how am I? Yeah. As, a, as an individual, as a person on this planet of ours, how are you? How? Well, I think it's a two-part question. <laughs> the, first, the first question is how, and do you, you know, who can answer that question? Everybody's been asking that since time began, how. And the, the second part, am I? Yes, the answer is yes, I am. That, that's Good. the two-part <laughs> question. But we, gotta, but we have a big show tonight. <clears throat> are, you, are you happy, Paul? I'm a happy, John. Are you, are you fulfilled? Fulfilled? Yeah. Yes, I am. When I'm the sun comes up every day, do you jump out of bed and say what to yourself... What are you going for here? <laughs> what are you getting at? We're just, we got uh, kind of a light show. I'm just trying that. to kill I, some time. Know, I live in a town where it was just a dreary day today. It was 80, though. I don't know where you... <laughs> you are in the, you know, the windmills of your mind. No. I, I, I don't know what's going on. But, you're, uh, you're in New York. This is reality, babe. This is the real... This is a sit <laughs> <laughs> when we come in here to do this show every day, we've got something to say to the... But uh, overall, you describe yourself as a happy man. A happy man. person, yes. All I right. Am. Yes. I can't, oh. uh... It looks like I'm not going to get Menudo tickets. Uh. <laughs> what? Yeah, I don't know. I know, well... <laughs> Now, let's get on with it. You know, uh, sometimes in this program, we do this show as if it were live, ladies and gentlemen, although because of time zones across this great land of ours, it makes it impossible to actually do it at 12.30 at night, but we do it as if it were live, but periodically, for one reason or another, it becomes necessary to edit this program. We're now going to show you a few examples of recent editing work. Every once in a while, there's a problem with a guest, whether it's uh, their fault or our fault. We try to correct the problem in the editing room. Now, this segment you're going to see, for example, was never on the air, but I think it will show you the kind of thing I'm referring to. Watch closely. My next guest is an actress and an author. She has recently written a new book called The Body Principle. We're very delighted to have her with us. Please welcome the one, the only, Victoria Principle. Obviously, you're not Victoria Principal. Uh, no. Uh, where is Victoria Principal? I don't really know. Must be some kind of a mix-up here. Uh, who are you, then? Uh, my name is Kyle Thompson. I'm the manager of a family-oriented fast food chain. It's part of a nationwide chain. Uh-huh. And you have a lot of interesting stories about this? No, not really. None that I can think of. Uh-huh. Have you done with Victoria? Where is she? Don't lie to me, you deadbeat. Where is... Come on. Marty! Anytime. There you go. Come on back. Now, uh, at other times, we have technical problems, and if we can, we try to straighten these out. Here's uh, one of the most common ones we run into. Hi there, welcome back. We have a, a fine show for you. A little later on in the, this half hour, Bess Meyerson will be here uh, to explain... Dave? Uh, Dave? Yeah, Hal. We're having trouble lighting it that day, but just hold on, we're working on it. Oh, okay. Just how long will it take, Hal? 15, 20 seconds. Okay, fine. Out. I guess you won't be eating this, Dave. <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. Another reason for editing the program is to fix up audio mistakes that uh, occur very rarely here, such as having more than one microphone on at a time. If it interferes with the guest performance, then of course we would just as soon edit it out of the program. Uh, this will give you an idea of how that goes. My next guest is a singer. He's also a songwriter, and he can currently be seen at the Folk Havel here in uh, New York City, down in Greenwich Village. Uh, we're delighted that he could be with us tonight. Please welcome Gene Batley. Gene. <laughs> Barbara, how was dinner? 
Not that. What'd you have? Shrimp scampi. No, you, you either had shrimp or you had scampi. Which would you have? Uh, shrimp. It was shrimp. Yeah. What's this guy's name? Gene Batley. Somebody ought to tell him it's 1984. Where'd he come from? Steak and brew? <laughs> yeah. What'd you get Hal for his birthday? Oh, I didn't know it was his birthday. Yeah, he needs support hose. Well, I wish this guy would get a cab. Gee, man. This wasn't your idea, was it? No. Oh, brother. As, uh, as a rule, we get great audiences here, uh, like this fine group tonight, but sometimes... <laughs> but sometimes, because of some misunderstanding or other, we have to edit the program because of the audience. It's unfortunate, but true. So just exactly what kind of research was involved in uh, putting together the uh, Encyclopedia of Snack Food? Well, I started at the Library of Congress, where I read everything I could on the subject. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great place. Yeah. Uh, and then when did you actually start to sample uh, the subject matter? Well, I had a lot of informal experience as a child in Michigan, and uh, some people from Michigan. <laughs> anyway, as an adult, I decided to take it seriously, but I got sick on all the research because I ate it. So I hired a research assistant, and uh, then uh, I found that the hardest part was there's research on Asian snack foods. There are all those insect treats. Excuse me, do, do, do we have a, a problem here? Uh, yeah, Dave, I think we have a, a short in the applause sign. Oh, is that right? That's, oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you can come back, can't you? Yeah. Okay. That's, uh... At other times, everything is going smoothly from a technical standpoint, but there's just something not quite right here in the studio, and I think you'll have to agree that everybody has nights like these. So, uh, anyway, today is the, um, what, is, what is the date? Paul, what's the date today? Oh, I don't know. But, uh, what, is it like the 5th or the 6th, or what is it, what is it? I, I said I don't know. <laughs> okay, uh, for the sake of the argument, let's just say that it is the 6th, okay? Dave, I, I don't know. Just All don't right, know. it's the 6th. Now, what's the weather like outside? Weather? For Dave, how the f am I supposed to know? What am I, supposed to be a calendar or something? A, a f weather man? I am, I'm, I'm a musician. I'm not some kind of a bully trivia expert. Every, every time you come out here, you ask me some kind of a kind of a question, and I don't know what I'm supposed to say. I've had enough of it. Yeah. Well, Paul, if, if that's the way you feel about it, maybe you'd like to come over here and do something about it. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I will. I think I should... Hold it, you fellas. Come on, cool down, cool down. Take a walk, will you? Let's not have any of this stuff. Please. Now, come on. Cool down. Gee whiz. Uh, okay, let's see. I'll never forget the time that the guy who types up the credits for this program's program uh, was having some emotional <laughs> problems. That was the only time we ever had to edit the very end of this show. It was kind of odd, but... Well, that's it. We're out of time. Just a minute here to thank my guests this evening, uh, Andy Rooney and, of course, Mark Rabowski. Now, we'll see you Monday, folks. Thanks, Paul. Thank you very much, Bill. Have a good night, folks, and a nice weekend. Bye-bye. <laughs> for uh, commercial. We'll come back and we'll explain to you how uh, the Identa kit works with uh, Frank Moriello. So come on back. Yeah, all right. We've got a swinging show. We've got Buddy Hackett, yeah. <laughs> Along with performance artist Laurie Anderson, all right. Paul, uh, come on over here. It's Paul Schaefer. 
Uh, last night, if you weren't watching last night, although I find that hard to believe that someone in North America wasn't watching last night, uh, we settled, uh, we didn't settle, but we have two lawsuits ready to go. We're suing Larry Holmes. First of all, we're going to attach the gate of his next fight. And, and then he'll be sued in addition to that five million dollars. So that's good. And the Merchant Marine Academy Choir, they will be sued for three million dollars. So I, I, for one, couldn't be happier. If we collect, that's... Suing uh, the Merchant Marine. Yeah, for three, billion, three million. They didn't show up for our big anniversary party. Um, now we're getting ready here to do... Oh, by the way, and, and I know I shouldn't say this again, but she was on again. Two more shows. She was on the Today Show this morning. <laughs> and she... <laughs> and she was... <laughs> she was on uh, Merv Griffin last night. Apparently, she's a regular on Merv Griffin. This there you show. go again. Joan Collins. Joan Collins was on another one of those shows. Dave. And it's always the same. She goes on and she whines about the burden of being a sex symbol. That's what she whines about. Well, why, why are you interested in having her come here? Well, we, do, we don't want her here. It's just that I think we the no woman should be whining. stopped from being on all of these shows. <laughs> I tell you what let's do. We'll get a calendar and we'll start. We'll, I'll show you. We'll, like today. What's the date today, Paul? Oh, you're right here. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh. May 8th. All right. Uh, we'll get a calendar, and on May 8th, we'll, we'll jot down uh, Joan Collins, Merv Griffin, and uh, the Today Show. That was yesterday she was on. Yeah, yesterday she was on. Who knows what show she's been on today already. You know, the gal writes a book. She has a... Yeah, well, never mind. No, what? What? She writes a book well, and she's... Well, she has, a, she has a, seems to have had affairs with a lot of very famous people. And, and well, she's, she's older. She's an then, older woman. Yeah, and then she writes about all the... And she's in Playboy, nude, undressed. Well, she looked good. Well, how old is she? I don't know. Who knows? She's old enough. Old enough. No. She's, she's oh, 60 old she's enough. a day. Yes. <laughs> now we're really... Now Where we're am really. I? We got, a, we got a deal to do here. What are you going to... You going to get your mother something for Mother's Day? Oh, is it Mother's Day coming up? Well, what I don't know. Do they celebrate it in Canada? They do, as a matter of fact. Yeah. You're going to get her something? I got it now. Yeah, I guess don't you will. Uh, <laughs> you know, we're, we're well into our third year now here on the program, and we thought tonight would be a good opportunity to look back at some of the magical moments and marvelous stars that have brightened this very studio. Hey, I tell you, lots of memories. You know, <laughs> you know, Dave, of all the nutty things that we have done on this show, I think that my favorites have been the action segments where you participate in some kind of sport. Yeah. <laughs> well... Is anyone watching now? No, no. It doesn't are, matter. <laughs> we're on a little later tonight is okay. the problem. It doesn't see? really matter. Uh, well, matter. funny that you should mention that, Paul, because we have a videotape from one of those segments. So watch closely. <sighs> okay, now, Dave, remember, keep your head down and break your wrist. You'll have no problem. Okay, great. Now, see, why do they keep uh, veering to the left like that? Well, you're pulling the ball just a little bit. You're hooking it. Why don't you try using your uh, left arm a little bit more? Okay. All right, a little more on the left. Yeah, that felt better. That looks better. Yeah. Give it a couple more tries. Yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, actually, it's pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah, that would look great. Thank you very much. I appreciate you coming by. No problem. I guess what we're doing now is reminiscing that's about right. some that's of our right. favorite moments on the right. show. Right. I don't yeah. think people understood what well, we were we up to there. Well, we didn't say that at all. No, we started wailing about Joan and I know. Then no, we just no, segue right into this. We're, we're reminiscing about the past highlights of the show. Hey, I tell you, too, it's exciting meeting famous sports figures. Oh, boy, that, nothing could be uh, farther from the truth, Paul. Or nothing... That's the truth. Yes, it's not just the guest stars that make the show so special. There's also our hard-working late-night staff. You are so right, and you know no one works harder than our own announcer, Mr. Bill Wendell. Boy, you can say that again, Paul. Bill Wendell. <laughs> Listen, Dave, do you remember the time when he was announcing our show, and then he also had to get up early every morning to sign on oh, the yeah. network? Yeah, we were all afraid that the strain was going to be too much for him, and I think it probably was. You get an idea by taking a look at this video. Okay, tape. come on, your shirts. Everybody, your shirt. I have to iron these shirts right now. Everybody, give me your shirts. Come on, give me your shirts right oh, now. Bill, yeah. excuse me. These people can iron, iron their own shirts. Come on, let's go. Relax. You don't understand. You really don't understand. No, and don't call me Bill. My name is Linda. I know, Linda. <laughs> Come on, Linda, let's go ahead.
<laughs> Remember afterwards when we had to pack him with shaved ice, it says here. Okay, now. <laughs> Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, but the great thing is, no, never mind. Just let's... Okay, well, you know, we've done thousands thought. of interviews on this show, and sometimes they don't turn out quite as expected. Well, Paul, do you know what I'm referring to here? Dave, I think I do. Uh-huh. Let's take a look at the clip. All right, another videotape. Uh, get well, I've been looking forward this. to meeting our next guest for quite some time. This is a man who claims that he can actually eat an entire automobile. Please welcome Norm Brenner. Thank you very much for being here. You, you can actually eat a car, huh? Yes, I can. Uh, yes, I can. And uh, w when was the first uh, you began doing this? I guess I was about 19. And how many cars have you eaten since then? Uh, is this the only thing we're going to talk about all night, this eating cars? Well, it's uh, pretty much the reason we uh, invited you on the show. Every show I go on, all they want to talk about is eating the cars. There's a lot more to me than just eating the cars. And frankly, I'm not going to talk about it here tonight. Um, what do you do when you're not eating cars? Uh, run errands. Do you have any hobbies? Aside from eating cars? Yeah. No. And how do you make a living? I eat cars at uh, state fairs, Lions Club functions, things like that. Yeah. I tell you what, you just stay right there. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Boy, can you believe the crazy fashions in those days? I want to tell you, Dave, I think, though, that some of the most memorable moments have come on our special theme shows. Special theme shows. <laughs> well, Paul, you've inadvertently led me to the next clip. No. Yeah. <laughs> must, be my, must be my lucky must day. Must be your lucky day. Now, yes. do you remember the night that we decided we'd just do a really kind of very relaxed <laughs> show? Where any anything kind of would go, very relaxed. Show. Just let it all hang out. That's right. That's yeah. right. Surely you must be referring to the really foul show. That's that right. We, we might. We thought it might be fun one night to be informal and let the rough edges show, sort of like tonight. Um, I don't know. Maybe we let it get too far out of hand. It's another videotape coming up here in a couple of weeks. So what do you do? Well, I'm currently on Broadway. Is that? Um, Boring when you have to do that same shit night after night. night. I, well, I'm afraid I don't agree with you. Well, don't don't get upset. I, I am so fucked up right now. So, uh, I'll tell you what. Stay right there, and uh, we'll do a commercial. But we'll <clears throat> we'll be right back. You know, steam, right? Giddy time. Oh yeah. Those were yeah. giddy time. Giddy. Now, that's comedy. Uh, well, I'm afraid we've got time for just one more. Gee, time. <laughs> Doesn't time fly when yeah, you're having really fun? Does. I want it to. Now, this was one of my favorite sometimes guests. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see the period. <laughs> this is one of my favorites. Yeah. Sometimes guests have funny ideas about what they should be... have funny ideas about what they should do on the show, and, well... Let's watch. Funny ideas about what, what they should, should do. do. Okay, we're back with the Blue Angels. Now, Colonel, uh, I understand you brought some uh, film of some of the amazing aerobatic stunts you and your men perform in the sky. Um, no, I didn't. I thought we were going to get the chance Well, I to... thought it might be more interesting if we demonstrated some of those stunts here in the studio live for you. Flight group, assemble. Delta formation. Heel off on my signal. One. Two. Three. We were reminiscing about yeah, highlights. Looking back there on yeah. highlights. Uh, we have a, a wonderful program for you tonight. Stupid Human Tricks, Buddy Hackett, and Laurie Anderson, plus, of course, Paul and America's premier rock and roll band. Come on, folks, back after we take a look at this.
And from Saturday Night Live, we have uh, Christopher Guest. And now, Paul, tell the folks who also is sitting in with the band tonight. David, let me tell you this. We are unbelievably honored to have with us this evening two of the greats of the blues. These guys have uh, influenced everybody from the Stones to uh, Chris Sarandon. And uh, <laughs> now we're... <laughs> They're, they're two of the greats, and we're really thrilled to have them. Buddy Guy and Junior Wells. Very yeah, nice to see you. Sitting here with us tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here, gentlemen. We'll look forward to hearing you guys play uh, all evening. Well, uh, oh, let's get to the calendar. Let's take care of this first uh, before I go. All right, here's, uh, this is where we are. Now, for those of you who have no idea what this is, uh, and I'm beginning to not understand it fully myself, but Phil Donahue is uh, coming to New York very soon. And by the way, here's that storm that gave us the snow last night. As you can see, all up and down the eastern seaboard, we've had lower than normal temperatures, while in the desert southwest, it's that high-pressure system keeping things nice and dry out there. So. Let's take a look at the temperatures for tomorrow. Um, oh, Thursday. By the way, Thursday, we have a surprise. Let me just indicate, is, is it Thursday? Yeah. That S is for surprise. So, <laughs> Tune in on Thursday and see what the surprise is. Okay, there, there goes Phil Donahue. $2,200 for that. <laughs> we, uh, we have a terrific, uh, terrific program for you tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get to it. You know... We try to do every night uh, the equivalent of a live show. We start the tape, and an hour later, we have a show. But occasionally, for one reason or another, we rarely have to edit this production. Now, tonight, we have assembled a few reasons, a few examples of why, in the past year or so, we have been, uh, found ourselves in a position to edit the program, and we're going to share those with you tonight. You know, sometimes, for whatever reason, not tonight, certainly, but occasionally, uh, the audience and myself, we, we just don't seem to get along. Here now is an example so, uh, of why weekend, we had to edit once. We had to set our clocks back, and the Reagan people are quite happy about that. They're hoping it'll make the president look an hour younger. <laughs> <laughs> You suck too, buddy. Call it. Jeez. I have to take that out, I think. You can understand why. So, we, we thought it would not be a good idea for the kids to see that, so we took that out. Uh, you know, even with a, an, alert, uh, an alert production staff here, and we have uh, one of the best in the business, by the way, and they choose all of our guests, well, every now and then, uh, somebody will slip through who really shouldn't have been a guest on the show, and we don't realize it until it's way too late. Here's an example of how this happened so once. So your father us. was a man, and your mother was a, um... A ferret. That's right. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm not sure this could happen, because I don't think the, the chromosomes would correspond, and uh, it seems like it's probably genetically impossible. Well, uh, I, uh... Well, I guess you caught me. I'm so ashamed. I just did it to get on TV. I didn't think you'd figure it out. I didn't know about that genetic stuff. Now, this was kind of interesting. There was the time that the, uh, the number of our telephone that we use right here on the desk on the show, the number of this phone was accidentally broadcast on an episode of one of NBC's new fall shows, and it caused us some problems, and we had to edit those so out also. your family actually drove out here, is that right? Full way. Excuse me, just a minute. Yeah. Hey, pukey Brewster, get off the air. Your show's terrible. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and how long are you going to be in town? About three days. Three days, well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Punky stinks. Uh, and then, what, do you just go back to California? Yeah, we're going to leave tomorrow, uh, today. Yes. Hey, here's the new Punky Brewster theme song. <laughs> Though I, I try to give the show my complete attention, sometimes my... Uh, Personal endeavors will will get in the way of an interview, and here's when it happened one night. On a picture of one of your homes. Wow, that is a, an awful lot of windows. Close to a thousand. 
Close to a thousand? Mm -hmm. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you something. Have you ever seen this stuff? No, I haven't. This is one of the greatest products the Amway people have come up with. It's a window cleaning fluid. Now, I don't care whether you have grime, road tar, grease, blood, fingerprints, tree sap. Do you get a lot of tree sap? I'm telling you, you get a couple of shots of this stuff, and that is history. It's gone. I've never seen anything work quite like this. Now, I tell you what, you're pretty well off. Let me put you down for a couple of cases, huh? Oh, thank you, Mr. Letterman. I have servants, and they have all the cleaning fluid that they can use. Damn! Sometimes a guest uh, hearing that this is a, a comedy show, I'm not sure where they heard that, by the way, but sometimes a guest under that impression will try to break the ice with a, a little joke, and uh, we appreciate the attempt, but uh, more often than not, it, it really doesn't work out, and here's an example of when it didn't work too well. Our next guest is a distinguished scientist who has written a fascinating book about geology and its relation to everyday life. Please welcome Dr. Ernst Hummel. one of these and finally we, tr we try to do a lot of informative demonstration segments on the program and sometimes uh, those two get a little out of hand I think the t tape is self-explanatory we're about to suture the aorta <laughs> no, and I think we all know just how painful that can be <laughs> oh, now oh I'm going to clamp off a supplying artery okay hold on, hold it let me do that well it's pretty tricky what I do don't you think? know if Okay, let me try it. All right, but and then maybe when he shaves his head before he comes to. It. All right, where do you get it? It's Just right in there. All right. Just. All right. Whoops! Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, oh, run, run for your lives! We're getting we got here. Oh, oh, oh. oh, what are you? Oh, I hope he's grounded. Oh. Woo! So you see. Mm. You all set? Okay, we got a wonderful show. We'll be right back with Stupid Human Tricks. What are we doing? We go over here, don't we? Uh, say hello to the folks, uh, Paul. Say hi to them. Let me, uh... Thank you very much. Let me just say one thing while, while I have, while I have the chance, if I may just say. Yeah! That's all. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing fine. Are you excited? I'm very excited. You have new glasses? Are those new glasses? I got a new a pair of glasses today. Kind they look of a, good. Well, this is a, the uh, Revenge of the Nerds is so damn big now. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I thought I'd go with that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, How we're getting you? excited. We're getting ready to go to California. We're going, uh, we'll be out there the first week in October. And uh, we're... First week in what? I'm sorry, first week in May. <laughs> Uh, and and we've, uh, we're suggesting now, and I think this is a darn good idea, that when we get to California, because we're visiting and we will be guests in the Golden State, that people give us a lot of gifts. And it's turning out to be pretty nice. Not this kind of stuff, you know. Uh, now, uh, a couple of nights ago, a guy phoned in and he said he would cater a party of 40 with a 14-foot uh, hoagie, which is either a sandwich or a surfboard. We're not sure, but we're, we're looking into that. Uh, another concern called and said that they would cater a party for us at the home of Liberace. Yeah. So it's looking, it's looking better. B but, but, you know, I think that uh, there's no reason why c uh, civilians ought to be responsible for giving us gifts, right, Paul? It should be the network. Well, you're yeah. right. Yeah. You're right. NBC should really. NBC. And, and I have a couple of ideas for gifts, and I want to get them in right now before Bill Cosby decides to renegotiate his contract. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think what we would like, and I haven't talked to Paul about this, but if NBC can just do this one thing for us when we go to California, it would be very exciting for me. I'd like an ice sculpture of Paul and myself. Oh, that's a nice idea. Yeah. Do you have anything you'd like from the network when we go out there? When we go out there? Yeah. 
How about white stretch limos for each guy in the band? Okay. That's <laughs> uh, just for all the right. duration of the stay out there. And uh, a lot of hostesses. I think the, the studio should be crawling with hostesses at all times. Do they have Valerie Perrine under contract for anything? I, I, don't, I don't think they do. I'd Paul. love to meet her, you know. That's one thing. All right. Let's get on with it, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, ordinarily we tape this program straight through from beginning to end without a break, but occasionally, rarely, seldom, something goes wrong, and when it does, we do the only reasonable thing. I pick out a scapegoat and fire him. Well, in that spirit, we'd like to show you tonight a few of these mishaps to explain why sometimes it's necessary to edit our program. Are you ready? All right. Well, first of all, there was this one time when I just didn't see the signal that my floor manager was giving me, and I think you'll see the results for yourself. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> well, welcome back. Excuse me. Uh, you know, any television program can have equipment failures, and sometimes it's with the electronic equipment, or maybe with a prop or something, or sometimes even a piece of furniture can be a problem and would uh, cause How a staff to have a Can you still feel your legs? Feel my right leg, but you know what we need is some kind of a jack so we can separate the arms of this thing. I got one in the trunk of my car. I'll go down and get it. Just take me a couple of seconds. I'll be right back. Maybe we should call the fire department. They have those things for wrecks. Oh, yeah, uh, Jaws of Life. Yeah, Jaws of Life. Yeah, okay, that's what we'll do, Bob, but we'll call the fire department, get the Jaws of Life. You'll be out of here in a couple of hours. Stay right there. Jaws of, jaws of Life for the Jaws of Life. Uh, Hal, do me a favor, have the uh, Talbot brothers standing by, will you? Right there. Okay, uh, uh, I'll tell you about the Talbot brothers in a few minutes, but we, we no longer worry about a piece of material not getting a laugh because we have something that is, uh, I don't know, it's, it's bigger than comedy itself, and, well, if, if one of these doesn't work, we'll show you the Talbot brothers. Uh, it's kind of a standby for you. It's kind of a treat, kind of a bonus. Uh, studies have shown that the level of job stress in network television is second only to that of police bomb squads. Well, this can lead to little errors that have to sometimes be edited out of the program. Well, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I tell you what, uh, we have to pause here. We'll be right back with more amusing anecdotes about mound building termites after you take a look at this. It has to be the same principle as the modern day garage. Very similar. Well, that's interesting. Simon just snapped. Wow, she's loopy. Okay, Hal, get ready. I'll let you know if we, if we, when, when we need the Talbot brothers. They're waiting. At a moment's notice, right? Right. Okay. That's our director, ladies and gentlemen, Hal Gertner. Thanks, Hal. What was that, Dave? <laughs> Sometimes the show... Excuse me, that, it's scary, please. Thank you, Hal. Sometimes the show is disrupted uh, by uncontrollable, unforeseen outside events, as was the example here. Between the husky and the big man's sizes. Dave! Well. Dave! Please don't let them get me! Please don't let them get me! I beg you, please don't let them get me! Okay, finally, you try to anticipate the problems the best you know how, but sometimes they just creep up on you, like in this new product demonstration. I think Paul so, will Dr. remember Sanborn, this. you're going to slice up the salami using the, the laser. That's right, Dave. Okay, go Let ahead. Let me just turn yeah. it on back here now. Uh, 
Great. Do you mind if I try? Well, it's a little tricky, Dave. Let me, I don't know. Let me just uh, well, let me see here. Well, okay. Uh, oh, it comes off this. Well, oh, whoa, whoa watch it, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, can you feel that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you all right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're close. Yeah. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll be right back after this commercial. <laughs> this going to be another one of those tape delays. Okay, okay. I'll be darned, we didn't need the help of the Talbot brothers. Well, uh, we have a great show for you tonight. Don't turn over and watch the CBS Late Movie. It's not a movie, and you'll be, you'll be sorry you did. Uh, we have star maker and cable TV host Richard Rothman, Fun with Gravity with Dr. Richard Brand, comedian Gary Mule Deer, and a look at World Without Taxes. All of this, yours for the asking, right after you take a look at these messages. <laughs> You know, last night we, uh, we showed the picture uh, of you in uh, uh, New York Magazine. There's a nice yeah. article about Paul this week in New York Magazine. And today we get in the mail our copy of the new Gentleman uh, Quarterly, Gentleman's Quarterly, uh, for June. And take a look in here. It's our own uh, Chris Elliott. Look at this guy. Mr. Big Time. Yeah. Yes, sir. Chris Elliott. We must be doing something right. Are you saying his picture is better than my picture? No, I didn't say that at all, Muriel. <laughs> uh, you know, anyone familiar with this program knows that most of the time we tape our show without pauses or interruption. But there are those rare, rare occasions when we do have to go back and edit the videotape. Sure, it takes time and money, but we make up for it by doing plugs for Beechwood-aged Budweiser. Wouldn't you like a nice cold Bud now? Now, let me show you some of the examples of why we have to edit this television program. Example number one. This will be example number one here. That, that far from the window. <laughs> New York has always been terrific to us, but once in a while we run into some problems because of the very city where we originate, like this particular night. So this is night. really a fascinating book, and, and what exactly is the premise of the uh, publication here? Well, it's about relationships and how to avoid bad ones. There are also a number of recipes for light dinners that you can make for under $5. Yeah, well, well that's interesting. What, what relationship is there... It'll be all right. No, you, they usually don't get past the fifth floor when they're that big. That's, it'll be all right. No. Then there was the time I decided to drive the NBC bookmobile all by myself. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, 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 hey. Whoa, oh, oh, hey. Oh, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. What, 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 what? Mr. Letterman, I'm, I'm awfully sorry to what? have to pull you over, sir, but... That oh, no, you, you didn't there on see the, that. That's strictly prohibited. No, it's NBC not. Policy. No, you didn't see anything. I saw the amber warning okay, light. get the cuffs. Get the cuffs. Net. Come on, get the cuffs. You're Listen, taking me I don't want to... Paul, now pay attention. Pay attention here. All right, I... We're right in the middle of a little uh, comedy uh, skit here. Pay attention. Are we? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I know it's hard to prove, but we are. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Then there was the, uh, sometimes we have to edit because a member of our uh, usually superb technical crew, uh, technical crew uh, has to do some work on my mouth. Uh, let's start all over again. Sometimes we have to edit the show because a member of our usually superb technical crew lets his or her personal life interfere with his duties right here on the show. And watch and we'll These show you how that thermometers happens. are really nice, but they're, they're not available in stores, are they? No, they're just for people who love to watch the Weather Channel yeah. on cable. Yeah. Uh, they send us in essays on why they're crazy about the Weather Channel. And we send them this. It's yeah. that simple. Yeah, but it's not really a contest, is it? No, it's it's a gesture of goodwill. And uh, plus, we're trying to, to publicize a new stereo FM simulcast of our round-the-clock weather program. Yeah. So people at home who watch uh, the Weather Channel on cable and also have a, a radio will uh, really be in for a surprise. Oh, no. It's warm in here, isn't it? It's hot. It's way too hot in here. Uh, sometimes the people who run Rockefeller Center, the building from which we broadcast, can also be a little too industrious in executing their responsibilities. Watch, we'll show you how to be on the works. show to tell us the secret of Dick Clark's eternal youth. Said Celia, every year he sheds his... Hey! Hey, knock it off! Ah! Hey, we're doing a show! What? 
stop that. We're trying to do a show. Hey, it's up to you, buddy. Either I do it now or I do it during your stupid Petrix. Whatever the hell you want, you'll pay for it. Ooh. Same guy you saw. Same guy you saw. Same guy you saw in Gentleman's Quarterly. There he is, right there. Yeah. Bending over, hiding his stomach. Uh, sometimes one of our stupid human tricks doesn't go exactly as planned. You're going to throw the knife at the target and hit the bullseye, right? Blindfolded, Dave. Blindfolded, that's right. Okay, now we've cleared the uh, folks away from the target area. Anytime you're ready, go ahead and throw it. It's going to throw the knife. Oh, look at this, folks. Say hello to Bob Hope. Bob, nice to see you. Thanks for coming by. Bob Hope, ladies and gentlemen. Bob, come on over. You look great. Uh-oh. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. Bob. Ooh. Evening. Goodness, Bob, are you all right? Ooh. Ooh, you're doing a special pretty soon, aren't you, Bob? Ooh, ooh. Okay, that's sometimes... Oh, we have to edit the show. Let me, uh, let me tell you who's here tonight. We have, uh, Jay Leno. You ever operate a, uh... Jay Leno is here. And, uh, also actress Ann Wedgworth is here. And, uh, singer Robert Gordon, who will be, uh, playing with the band. And, uh, we'll start the show right after this one, so come on back. Now, we, we shouldn't make light of this. I was uh, going over the posted speed limit, and, and I made a mistake, and it uh, won't happen again. No. <laughs> well, you shouldn't be speeding. It's not a good idea. The law is 55 miles an hour, and it's, uh, it's not only the law, it's a good, good idea. <laughs> well, you shouldn't. You shouldn't be making fun of that, should you, no, Paul? No, you're right. All right. You won't do it again. I didn't say you? that. Ah. No, but you shouldn't. You have to but be... it won't uh, happen again. Huh? It won't happen again. No. You may do it again. I'm not going to... No, I won't do it again. I've learned my lesson. I won't be doing it again. Where are we? Oh, we're doing this. Boy, it snowed here in New York. Out, out where I live, we got about eight inches of snow. And my electricity is out. And then you get to the city, and uh, there's no snow at all. Not nutty. Great. <laughs> Dave. What? Can you see the stain? There's a huge stain no, on No, we shirt. don't have time to look at your stain. We have to go. We, we... It's right, right across okay, here. Okay, here we go. It's Paul's stain. All right. I don't know what happened. Permanently anyone, in the thing. I keep sending it to the dry cleaner. It comes back. Go ahead. you got a show to do. Anyone familiar with this program knows that most of the time we tape our program without pauses or interruption. But there are those rare occasions when we do have to go back and edit, like this little exchange about Paul's shirt. Uh, You're going to take that out? No, we'll leave it in. It was gold. Are you kidding? Take that out? You must be nuts. It's the gold. Uh, sure, the editing takes time and it takes money. But we make up for it by doing a plug for the National Meat and Seafood Company. For the finest in meat and seafood, remember, the National Meat and Seafood Company. All right. Now, let's take a look now at some examples of why we have to edit this program. You know, we try a lot of extras on the show, and uh, some work better than others. Uh, uh, look at this. We had to edit this one out. Watch closely. You know, folks, we've had the uh, tennis cannon, we've had the ping pong cannon, and the confetti cannon. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, a network television first, the late night bowling ball cannon. Yeah. Oh, oh no, they're not that heavy. Oh, they're not, not 16 pound balls. They're like 10. They're like 10, 12 pounds. You know. Uh, taping this television program in New York has uh, its advantages and, of course, its uh, disadvantages. Uh, the following is an example of uh, one of the disadvantages of working here in New York City. We had to edit this okay, out. Here's also. what we're going to do. Uh, right out the window there, that's uh, Sixth Avenue, about uh, 14 floors down, and uh, we're just going to see if we can't get a guy with uh, the bullhorn and, and bring him up here. We're, we're short a guest. Just take a second. All right. Hey, you in the plaid pants and the hospital haircut. No, 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 no. The guy who walks like a cartoon character. Yeah, you, Tubby. <laughs> Come on up to the stu... Uh-oh. Oh, oh. Oh. Yeah. See, we, had, we had to edit that out. Yeah. Yeah. 
You know, every, uh, every now and then we have a uh, mix-up involving our guests, and uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Take a look at this bit of videotape from a show we did a couple Something months ago. This. <laughs> How to help themselves if they are ejaculating faster than they want that's to... Enough. That's enough. No, 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 it's not... Well, that sounds like quite a vacation. I tell you what, we're, we're out of time, but why don't you just uh, stay here while the, the other guests come out? I think it might be fun. Would that be all right with you? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, our next guest is a, a brand new author and a former defensive tackle for the New York Giants. Please say hello to Todd Gilmore. Todd, come on out. Hi, Todd. How are you? Nice to see you. Have a seat. So, uh, I understand this is your actually your first book. Is that correct, Todd? And uh, how long did it take you to... Oh, my God. What the hell? Gee, gonna have to get the jaws of life in here. <laughs> and you know, she loved every minute of it. Uh, sometimes it's just a problem with our equipment uh, that we have to edit the show, and then we go back in and we can fix it up that way. Did I read that right? Sure. I'm talking with Raul and Julia, and uh, so what is the new business that you're involved with, Raul? Well, Dave, you know, the theater's always been my first love, but I'm about to open a chain of restaurants uh -huh. nationwide. Yeah, and uh, will they have your name on them? Yeah, we're going to call them Raul Julia's Backstage Burgers. Yeah. They're all designed to look like the backstage of a Broadway theater. Yeah, Sandbags, posters, yeah. mops, that yeah. type of stuff. Well, good. I'm just waiting. Excuse me. Will you, Barbara, will you keep the lid on that thing closed? You're going to screw up the toner. Sorry. Oh. Raul, I'm sorry. I'm That's very, I'm terribly That's sorry okay. about it. The lovely Barbara Gaines. Just the last one? All right. Because we have, a, we have a big show. We want to get to every thrill-packed minute of it. Uh, every now and then, we experiment with something, uh, experiment with something new here on the show. Uh, here's one project that never made it to the air. So his uh, name is Pasha. He is a uh, Bengal tiger. He was born in uh, Malaysia, and he weighs uh, 420 pounds. And, uh, Paul, what else do we know about tigers? Uh, well, uh, we know that uh, tigers can climb trees, mm -hmm. and uh, they can swim. That's right. Oh, so you've been reading the memos. Well, I studied a little bit. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's bring him out here. Ladies and gentlemen, another late night first. It's the late night tiger cam. Turn him loose, boys. Oh, wow. What a, oh, what a beautiful... Ah! It's a horrible night. <clears throat> we'll be... Uh, Right back with Carl Reiner. Dick Enberg is here and also. Business. Yeah. Yeah. I may do a number with you guys. Come on over. Do that one by Bono. <laughs> oh, by the way, if you're, if you're in the uh, Hartford area tonight, I will be sitting in with you two at the Hartford Coliseum. Uh, do we have time for this or not? Yes. Smells funny in here. What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know what that means at all. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, sometimes on this show, we, we try and do it just like it's a live show. We tape it from 5.30 to 6.30, and we put it on the air, and we hope uh, those hours between the time we tape it and it airs that it gets better. <laughs> but uh, occasionally, occasionally, we have to actually go in there and edit something out of the show. We don't like to do it. We don't do it very often, but occasionally we have to do it. And tonight, we're going to show you a few reasons why we edit the program. For example, some words or phrases find their way into the show which uh, the network deems to be offensive. Uh, these, of course, have to be taken out. Here's an example. Watch uh, what we're talking Andy about. Andy Dickerson wanted to be on the show. He claims to have invented a trombone that can only be heard by Garrick Utley. We said thanks, but no thanks, and told Danny to, to get a cab. <laughs> yes, Hal? Uh, I'm sorry, it's a uh, CBS building again. The what? The CBS building? CBS. Oh, let's see. No, oh, brother, look at that. Why? Why can't they be more responsible broadcasters? CBS <laughs> building. Paul, are we going to hear those guys again? 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy, I like that. That was inspirational. We're going to be playing all night, and we're going to yeah. do a feature tune, squib that, cakes at that, the end That of made that. me want to enlist or something. Uh, sometimes uh, precious airtime is wasted when a performer misses a, a cue. It can happen, and it doesn't happen much, but we usually try to edit things like that out of the show. Here's an example of when that would occur. Oh, okay, so now the dog is going to actually open the can of peaches using just the can opener all by himself, right? That's right. You, you don't help him at all. Mm -mm. Okay. Anton, we need a, a drum roll here, please. Okay. All right, so the dog will just use, using the can opener. Mm -hmm. Anton, can we have a, a drum roll? Uh, uh, just hold on, Dave. It'll be about uh, 15 minutes or so. Cheese. There you go. Uh, cooking demonstrations are a, a popular part of nearly every talk show, but they always don't go as planned, or they don't always go as planned. So here's what we do then. So what are these, Belgian waffles? Uh, not exactly. They're my own creation. Uh -huh. Okay, we're running uh, short on time, so if you could just get on with it, I'd really appreciate that. Well, you shouldn't really rush this. All right, sorry. Let, let me help you with this. I can just go ahead and put that down. Like that. Ooh, oh, oh, jeez. Woo! Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. Ooh, let me get this one. Is that painful? Here, let me just see if I can... Ooh. Ah, oh, gosh. This has happened before. Ooh. <laughs> See, see the kind of fun Sly's wife is missing here tonight? Uh, okay, every now and then uh, something happens uh, that we just can't explain, so we have to go back in and uh, hey, remove it from the, the folks sitting in with the band tonight. Sitting in with the band? Yeah, a couple right up now, there. What do you mean? Right there. What? Sitting in. Oh, my God, it's, it's the couple that was killed in the crash after the prom exactly ten years ago tonight. Sylvester Stallone's wife could have been right here enjoying that enjoying fine piece that. of comedy. Yeah. No. That would be one reason to edit the show, though, you, you have to admit. Oh, sure, you'd have to. I mean, some kind of spiritual apparition occurs, you have to take you that out. You would have to take that out of the show, yeah. Uh, and finally, technical malfunctions can always be a problem. For example, once we had a little mishap with the late night thrill cam, which you saw earlier, that we thought was better left out of the actual broadcast. Here's what happened. Watch closely. Hi, welcome back to the show. With us tonight is actor Raul Julia. Uh, Raul, have you ever seen our late night thrill cam? No, I haven't, Dave. It's very exciting. I'll tell you what, turn it on, boys. Let it rip. Watch how it flies down here. Look, see, there's the camera. Now watch, it really builds up speed here. Oh, oh, geez, it jumped the track. Oh! Like a little shot. Did somebody get Mr. G a glass of water? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay. We have time for this. Okay. It was a great show tonight. Kmar, Bruce Nash, and Alan Willow. Baseball Hall of Fame. Because still... the baseball season opened a couple of days ago, in the cannons tonight, you know, last week we had leftover jelly beans. In the cannons tonight, we have Cracker Jack. Oh, fabulous. Let's just, let's just try one, all right, and see what sure. happens. Do you mind? Uh, Anton, a small drum roll. Let's see if we can... Uh, this, is, this is like a hunting accident in the making, isn't it? I was just climbing over a fence and the some bitch discharged. All right, here we go. Last night uh, on the... Oh, we have it in slow. Oh, there it is. Slow motion instant uh, videotape replay. Hey, hey, kid, does your show have anything like that? 
Ah! Um, if you were uh, with us on the program last night, I, I, at the beginning of the show, I told what I felt was a very heartfelt, compelling, entertaining, and amusing story about uh, a couple of nights ago when I inadvertently poured a quart of Perrier water up my nose. <laughs> and after having told it, Paul, you kind of sneered and snickered. I thought it was a lovely story. No, no, That's you not true. No, this is what you did. I you said, you... Mm -hmm, cute. Cute. No, I think you so, are. So, all I'm saying, do you have a little story for us tonight? Well, I, I managed to come up with a story. Yeah, I've got a story. A true life anecdote from your own life? Yeah, I don't want it to be judged, though, you know, no, by a triumvirate judged. of, of, of space-age guys, you know, with looking down from above or something. What? <laughs> but I'll tell a story. All right, but keep it short. Okay, I was doing a short? Yeah. Okay. I, uh, I was doing a promotional uh, appearance a while ago in Philadelphia, right. and I... I kind of had a tight outfit on, and a girl came up to me and said, are you wearing any underwear under that? And I said, hey, baby, if you got to ask, how about that start? No. I sure wouldn't tell. Now, now what he's done here, he's, con he's confused the issue even further by telling a story that last night was told by Miss New York Auto Show 1989. Yes, and that was a cute story. Oh. She told. And the punchline was, hey, baby, if I was... I wouldn't be telling you a guy like you. Yeah. So, which, which I thought was a great. Paul, Paul, we don't want to discourage the kid up there. <laughs> From going into the business at all. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but before we get rolling, I just want to thank the uh, Westchester County Police, one of the finest law enforcement organizations in the free world anywhere, the brave men and women who patrol the highways and roads Dave. of Westchester County. Dave. Nice going. They, uh... They, na they nabbed you again, right? Well, they got you again? A little roadside chat. I see. Uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, this may come as a disturbing surprise to you, but occasionally, we like to think of this as a live program, but occasionally, untoward things occur that uh, make it necessary for us to edit various parts of the show. Uh, and tonight, I thought that uh, we'd take a couple of minutes here to show you various examples of why we have had to edit this program over the last uh, four or five years. Paul, do you have music for this? I got a little song for this. Yeah. Okay. There are reasons why we have to cut the tape. But a song like this, I just can't seem to fake. That's all I got so far. All right, never mind, never mind. Kind of an example right there. Uh, occasionally, uh, sometimes as uh, something as minor as a hole in my pants pockets uh, will cause a problem uh, that will require us to uh, edit it right out of our program. Here, watch what I'm talking about. Uh, so this is what happened last night. Uh, right after the program, I get in my car and I'm driving home and I'm going across the Hutchinson River Parkway. And uh, all of a sudden... Excuse me. I got a hole in my pocket or something. <laughs> so any, anyway, I... You know, sometimes uh, problems with the crew being in the wrong place at the wrong time will make it necessary to edit the program. Here, take a look and you'll see what I'm talking about. So how long uh, did it take you to paddle up the Amazon? Almost five months. I went in the dry Ow. season when... You can't stand there. Sorry. Nobody told me. So anyway, you were... Al! Sorry, Dave. I didn't see the camera. The biggest problem is with gnats and mesquite. What the hell is that? Oh, sorry about that, Dave. Uh, it, the guy is new. Just, just go ahead. Well, huge swarms of gnats would come at us and would be in the river and... Al! Oh, crap. Sorry, Dave. I'm really screwing everything up, ain't I? Al Mar. One of our stage hands. Al was uh, one of our very first interns. He came up through the intern program. Well, that's encouraging. Yeah. That should be encouraging for the... Uh, every show has uh, technical problems, and we certainly have uh, our share of them. Uh, there was the time uh, one of our cameras... Actually, I think the lens was in backwards, and we had to edit that right out of the show. 
So uh, how did you first get the idea to, uh, what, you actually are coloring your hair with uh, shoe polish? How did you get that idea? Well, I was shining a pair of boots one right. day, and boots? the idea just kind of popped into my head. Yeah, that's interesting, but I think shoe polish only comes in a few colors. There would be brown, uh, black, uh, maybe quarter of an oxblood, and for summery fashion fun, perhaps tangerine. Hal, is there something wrong with the camera? Let me check. All right, you know, editing... Editing is uh, also called for sometimes because, and, and I'm sorry to have to admit this, uh, but it's just too obvious sometimes that I'm not really interested in uh, what it is that a guest is talking about, and we have to edit that part of the show here. Young and in Paris in the 30s, it really was a movable feast. Uh, yeah, I bet it was. Paul! And Hemingway was always coming by for lunch, especially when I made fried bologna. Oh, yeah, you can't beat fried bologna. Paul! And finally, ladies and gentlemen, no, how matter, no matter how hard we try, and admittedly it's not very hard, accidents will happen, and, and I think you'll see why we had to edit this particular show. And uh, just a reminder for you folks who remember a couple of years ago when we would uh, crush stuff with that enormous steamroller, later in the program tonight we'll actually be smashing items with two giant hammers, just bang. Boy, like that, that should be fun, Dave. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah they're incredible. Good. They're enormous hammers. Did he say it's time to cut the giant hammers? Yeah, I think so. I've been fine. Excuse me, just a second. What would that be? Somebody cleaning their outboard motor? What the hell? Huh? That's all right. What is it, Al? What exactly is it? It's our latest gadget. We were going to surprise you with it. Well, what is it? What does it do? It's a compressor. We clean everything around and build up things. That's what the yellow hose is? That's what the yellow hose is. Well, let me see it now that you brought it up here. <laughs> all right, turn on the compressor, Al. And it's just it's just air and you clean it up. So it like stuff like that. After the after the thing went off. Yes. Take that up to my home, will you? Art imitating life, or, or vice versa, although it'd be hard to call it art. Hell, hard to call it life, isn't it? Yeah, of course! Thank you so much. Hi, Paul, how are you? I'm marvelous. Sitting I'm in with the band all sitting night? Sitting in this evening, the genius of the chromatic harmonica and the composer of Blues Ed, among many other classics, Toots Thielmans, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Sounding wonderful, too. Sounding just great. I'll check the files. I'll check the computer later. Bob, look this up on the computer, but I don't think we need to. I don't think you even need to go to the computer on this one, Bob. I'm going to go out on a limb here now and say, I believe the only guest we've ever had on the show named Toots. Uh, huh? Did we ever have Toots in the Maytals? Oh, did Jamaica? we or not? You better go to the computer, Bob, did we? Let's go to the videotape. All right, you know what that means? Sometime in the next couple of months, we'll be having a toots off. I know. you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 What's the matter? I'm, I'm thirsty. Are you thirsty? I could, I could use a nice cooling beverage. How can we get you one of those? Hal, 
This is, this is our director and racing legend, Hal Gurney. Hal, do me a favor, turn on the external camera up there on these... <laughs> up there on the seventh floor by all those uh, soda machines, all right? Okay, here we go. Hi! Hi, Dave. Hi, Patty, is it? Yes, Patty, Patty Acha. Wh uh, what's your last name? Acha. Ah, nice to see you, Patty. Where are nice you from? Nice to see you, Dave. Uh, originally from Guatemala. Guatemala? Where do now you live? I live in upper, upper Manhattan. I see. And what do you do for a living, Patty? Uh, I'm a law student at Columbia. Well, good for you. Now, Patty, I understand as well as being a law student, you're a member of a group known as Mensa. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Well, all right. For me and for everybody else looking in, why don't you explain the group for us? Well, Will you? It, it's the High IQ Society, and um, the criteria for being in Mensa is to be in the top 2% um, of IQs, mm -hmm. and it's a worldwide organization. Mm -hmm. And this is the Nor this is the Greater Manhattan, New Jersey, Long Island group here. Mm -hmm. Anybody in the club named Toots? I I don't believe so, <laughs> but we can check. <laughs> uh, all right. So now let me ask you, how high uh, an IQ do you have to have to get there into that Mensa group? One thirty-two or higher. Uh -huh. One thirty-two. One thirty-two or higher. And what is your IQ? May I ask you that? Is it polite for a man <laughs> to ask a woman her IQ? I don't know exactly, but it's. 140-something? 140 140-something. 140 if you had to guess, if you were hypnotized and, and someone said, we need an answer, absolutely, where would you put your own IQ? I don't know. 143. 140. Uh, I don't know. She's modest. <laughs> I She's really modest don't know, but... <laughs> All right. 143. Well, that's pretty good. All right, Patty. Now, let's take a look at the beverages. Okay. You have Coca-Cola Classic, Diet Coke. Right. Caffeine-free Diet Coke. Right. Sun-kissed. Diet Cherry Coke. Oh, that sounds good. Dr. Pepper, Nest Tea. Uh -huh. You want to see the other machine? Yeah, let's take a look at the other machine, Patty. Pepsi, Diet Pepsi, Pepsi, Pepsi Free, Schweppes Club Soda, Schweppes Diet Ginger Ale, Schweppes Ginger Ale, and Mug Root Beer. I'm going to have me one of them Mug Root Beers, Patty. <laughs> now, Patty, you mentioned that you have other members of the uh, Greater New York City Mensa organization with you? Yes, we do. Uh, and I and with their help, I'm going to receive a soda. Get That's it down right. here as quickly as you can. Here we go, Paul. Thank you. Well, it's 141. 141. Good yeah. for you. Thank you very much, Barbara. Nice to have you here this evening. Thank Barbara, you. ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Hey, I can't get this thing open. <laughs> well, you got to be some kind of genius you to get this thing open. What? Geniuses, Paul. All geniuses. Bringing me a Coke. Yeah. A mug root beer, soda. You gotta be a genius. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think I'm uh, spilling any secrets when I tell you that uh, sometimes things go uh, goofy or wrong on the uh, program and we have to do some editing. Essentially, what you're looking at here is a live show. That's right. We begin taping in the afternoon and we tape for one solid hour and usually 98% of the time, what we do here in the afternoon goes right on the air at night. Sometimes we have to make little edits, little, um, you know, just little, uh, what's the little, word I'm thinking of? Well, little fixes. Little fixes. Exactly. That's, that's the word I was having trouble yeah. with. <laughs> well, you got a hammer? Little fixes. So we thought tonight it might be fun. You might get a kick out of this. We're going to show you now 
well, some of the reasons why we occasionally have to edit this program. Here, uh, watch what I'm talking about here. Uh, you know, occasionally we are reminded that our high-tech equipment in the studio is uh, operated by human beings, and, and I must say, God bless them. Uh, as a result, however, sometimes we have the occasional problem. Yes, Watch and uh, tomorrow on the program, Marv Albert will be here, Jerry Seinfeld, and Kmar, the discount magician, will be joining us. What exactly is the problem? What's, what's going on there? Do we have, are we having some difficulty with the camera? It's, it seems to be Barry. What is... Uh, I overslept this morning. Uh, now, now what do we do? Edit the show? Nice to see you. There, sometimes you have to edit those out. Yeah. No, wait a minute, please. 62 geniuses brought me a soda. Yeah. Yeah. I hope it was worth it. Over the years, we've done a lot of cooking demonstrations with famous chefs from uh, restaurants all over the country. Usually, they go pretty well. But last month, we ran into an unforeseen problem and had to edit it right out of the show. Watch this. And we just add a touch of lemon. Yeah. Is that a half in. a lemon or just a touch? Just a half a lemon. Half a lemon. And we mix it up. Mix it up. Put on the bed of lettuce. Yep. A little bit of lettuce there. Now, and this is have... a it's a seafood salad. It's a summer seafood salad. Summer lovely... seafood salad. Paul, come over here and try this. Oh, I'd love Paul to. Paul you know, This is like a... Toby from uh, Hello, Toby's Toby. Restaurant. There's nothing downtown. like a, a lovely summer. Seafood salad, Paul. Summer seafood Dig in. salad. Paul? Paul? One of the clams tastes honey. Too bad the geniuses weren't here that night. They could have told you what was wrong. You know, <laughs> wow. I have a feeling that we're watching, what we're watching now is the real reason why we sometimes have to edit. Exactly, Paul. Very very insightful on your part. Thank you. Before booking a guest on the program, members of our talent department do a great deal of research. Still, oh, by the way, get ready for dead silence. Yeah, well, why should this be any different than, you know? Still, every once in a while, a mistake is made. Here comes Next the dead is silence. One of the most famous actors in the entire world, and his uh, brand new motion picture is entitled Bugsy. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Warren Beatty. Warren? Here he comes. Warren, nice to see you. What a pleasure it is to have you with us on the program. Uh, tell us, uh, Warren, how's your summer going? Warren? Warren? What? That's not Warren Beatty? You're not Warren Beatty. You, you get the hell off the show. And we're not paying for your hotel room either. Do you understand me? No, I don't. Warren. Can we see some more shots of Toots Thielmans, please? There you go. Always nice. Even though I'm entering my 37th year of show business, every once in a while I act like a complete novice. I'm doing a little of that here tonight. For example, watch this videotape we edit out of the opening of the show one night. Roll that tape, Hal. Hi. Hi there. Welcome to the show. Nice to see you. How are you? Yeah. Oh, I, my head's too close to the camera. H help, Hal. Hal, give me a hand here, would you? Sure, Dave. If, just, if you can, careful yeah, there. Okay. Oh, yeah! Woo. Wow, that was something. <laughs> the first time I've been in the control room in a year. <laughs> 62 geniuses, ladies and gentlemen. There are no prizes. When you do a show night after night, you're bound to suggest something that leads to disaster. Watch this. You'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, this is uh, amazingly heavy, this uh, shot here. How, how much does that weigh? 16 pounds. All right, Toby, why don't you uh, show us how that works? Right here? Yeah. Right here? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's mostly in the style, isn't it? It's in the legs, It's sure. not really strength so much as it is style. Is it's that the correct? strength of the legs, yeah. I think, is the best way to put it. Yeah. You cut it. Yeah, you coil up over right. Here and coil up. Uh-huh. Then you whip it around and you. <laughs> <laughs> On a swing of the sound, and I understand that President Bush. Is um, President Bush is. You bet. Yes, sir. Is there any way we can recover? 
Uh, We've had 62 geniuses yeah. and about 40 minutes of why we edit. Is there yeah. any hope for us at all tonight? How about editing? Oh, toots. Yeah, we got toots. Yeah. And uh, Calvin Trillin will be here. We'll do a commercial. Come on back, folks. <laughs>